Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Doc Bricks. I'm Chris, and this is the theme that killed LEGO Pirates. So what is this all about? Well, LEGO Pirates had a very brief resurgence in 2015, but we really haven't seen any sort of LEGO Pirates back as a full theme ever since. And there's a reason. These sets did so poorly that LEGO decided not to ever release Pirate as its own theme basically forever again, at least until the near future. Now, since then, we've gotten a couple of sets here and there, mostly surrounding LEGO ideas, like Pirates of Barracuda Bay, and we later on got a set from LEGO Icons for the El Dorado Fortress, but those are really just one-off sets, and since then, Pirates has not been back as a full-on theme. But now, I have the entire Pirates 2015 wave with me. I have literally finally just acquired it after hunting for a long time because these sets are really hard to find. And we're going to be taking a look at the entire wave and talking through why did these sets fail? And more importantly, how can LEGO learn from its mistakes to not repeat what happened to LEGO Pirates with any other LEGO theme going forwards into the future? And so, without further ado, let's jump right into LEGO Pirates 2015. Okay, so this is the entire LEGO Pirates 2015 lineup. All six sets, including the Pirates chess set, which technically doesn't really count, so really only five standard play sets, this was one of the most interesting lines that LEGO did in 2015, and not because it was actually that interesting. In fact, it was interesting because it, well, wasn't interesting, and let me explain what I mean by that. As you can see, this is basically the bare bones basics of what you would expect from a Pirates line. Pirates versus somewhat generic Imperial soldiers, and really no characters, no named characters in particular aside from the main captain who barely had a personality, no overarching story, just sets intended for creative play. Almost like the LEGO Pirate sets of the 90s. So why did those do so well? and this did not. Well, we're going to take a look at that and all the factors surrounding the failure of LEGO Pirates 2015 and the line that convinced LEGO not to do any more Pirates as a full-on theme since then. It's been almost 10 years, and we still don't have Pirates back as a full theme. But to start, I'm going to take a look at every single set to begin with and just analyze the sets themselves and talk about why I think that this theme didn't do as well as it could and should have. The sets in question comprised of the smallest set, Shipwreck Defense, at number 70409, retailing for 13 US dollars or 10 euros and coming with 84 different pieces and two minifigures. Next up, we had Soldier's Outpost, which came with the raft there as well as the small tower for the soldiers themselves. Set number 70410 retailed for 20 US dollars, 20 euros, and came with 164 pieces and three minifigures. Then, we had Treasure Island, another $20 or 20 euro set, 70411, it came with 3 minifigures and 181 pieces, so we have kind of two similarly sized buildings on either end. Then we have 70412 Soldier's Fort, which retailed for 30 US dollars, 35 euros, and came with 234 pieces plus 5 minifigures. Then we jump over to 70413, The Brick Bounty, which was actually the subject of a naming contest. There was a little bit of a contest where kids could choose the name of the next pirate ship and unfortunately the brick bounty was chosen which is probably the most boring name that they could have imagined no offense to the kid that picked it but literally the last pirate ship that we got was brickbeard's bounty so it was a bit disappointing and anticlimactic but you have the brick bounty here retailing for 100 us dollars 100 euros and coming with 745 pieces with seven unique minifigures and then, to round everything off, we had set number 40158, Pirate's Chess Set, which retailed for 60 US dollars, 70 euros, and came with 857 pieces, with 20 minifigures, obviously because it is a chess set, 18 of which were unique to the set. Now we're going to take a look at every single set one by one, but the first thing that I really want to talk about with this wave is that it almost feels like you fed an AI, make a LEGO Pirates theme, and this is what it spit out. And that is both a good thing and a bad thing, because this wave is very, very simple, and it really goes back to basics, in a way that LEGO hasn't really done since 2015. You see, there's no sorts of crazy fantasy elements here, there's no overarching plot or storyline, none of the characters really even have names, I mean, technically they do, but they basically aren't really characters, they're more like just people that you can use to play with, and you don't even really know who are the good guys and the bad guys. The pirates look a lot scruffier and more ragtag than the Admiral 
generals, and some of them definitely look like they might be on a more villainous side of things. But then, the Imperials are too uptight, and they're typically seen as the villains in a pirate story. Everyone wants to root for the pirates. So who do you really root for when you're building these sets? The other thing is that, again, since this stuck so close to the basics of what makes up a classic pirate story, I feel like this theme almost played it way too safe. In a year when LEGO was doing crazy things, Nexo Knights was coming out the next year featuring Castle mixed up with sci-fi, we even got the return of Bionicle also sort of back to its roots, this feels like a direction or a directive from the LEGO group that after the success of the LEGO movie in 2014, they just decided to bring back something that resembled the old hits without really trying to reinvent it for the modern audience, and that to me is the crux of why I think this theme failed. But we're going to get to that later on, and first I want to take a closer look at every single one of the sets, starting with the smallest and making our way all the way to the largest set of the wave. This is Shipwreck Defense. It features the most basic style of combat for a pirate versus an Imperial soldier. You've got a cannon and a bit of a play feature as well to actually knock over the pirate. The way it works is you take the cannon, and of course this is the standard pullback cannon that you use for a lot of the other older pirate sets. You pull back and you shoot. And in theory, you're supposed to be able to knock over the soldier here, but I guess that's supposed to happen after a few different hits, which is something I actually do like. It's a fun play feature, and this is a very nice and small charming set, featuring a bit of a shipwreck where you have the front of a boat as featured right here sticking out of a rock. Obviously, this is a shipwreck style of canoe style boat, so it's a really fun look at what could have been a full formed pirate ship, but now it's just a bit of a defense for the pirate himself. Now, I think it's as good as time of any to look at the minifigures. I do like a lot of the designs they did come up with for the minifigures of this wave. Although they do all end up feeling somewhat generic, they don't really have a ton of character to them. This pirate here probably has the most character because he's got a bare chest with an anchor tattoo, which is definitely a lot more interesting than the other striped shirts that we got for the rest of the pirates, but overall, it's just alright, I think it is a cool design to get a brand new mold for the bandana, which we did get in 2015, but nothing really stands out to me as special with the pirates themselves, and the Imperials are pretty much the same minus a few exceptions. The soldiers are okay, they're alright, they're nothing super special, but I do like the blue coats in general. You have some nice printing of the gold, dark blue, and white on the blue, but unfortunately this does suffer from that era of LEGO printing which is still plaguing LEGO to this day. They just couldn't print white on any sort of darker colors, so white on blue does not look right, and the same kind of goes for the pirate skin as well. The yellow on brown doesn't look right either. Still, it was cool that pretty much every single soldier got the actual epaulets here as well as a backpack and a hat, which is really nice, and overall, for $13, this set is pretty good. It's, it's kind of a small basic starter set that introduces you to the world of pirates. And one theme that you're gonna start noticing as we get more and more into this theme is that all of these sets, as I said, they kind of feel AI generated, which isn't even necessarily a bad thing. Like if you told an AI to just come up with ideas for pirate sets and to spit them out, this is probably what I'd come up with. Like this is pretty much just a quintessential pirate set. And the one really cool thing that this wave did, that I really do appreciate about this wave, it's kind of the one thing that I really like about it, is that they specifically made these sets fully modular with each other. You might notice that this has a little clip on the end. Well, that brings us to the next set, which is the $20 Pirates Treasure Island here, and this set came with a crocodile, the Treasure Island, and a small boat for the Imperials, but what's really cool is that this can actually combine with the other set, you can connect them up like so to form one full-on scene, and that is something I really love when LEGO does. LEGO should do more stuff like this, and I'm so happy they actually made these sets fully modular with each other. That's like the coolest thing about all of these sets, is that they are fully interconnectable. Still, let's just take a look at this set on its own. It's kind of a standard, again, just a very, very basic $20 Skull Island where you have a tree that you can pull to actually open and close the gate, which is a nice touch. I do like the overall look and feel of that. That's just mounted on a mixel joint there, so you can have a full range of motion if you want for the tree itself. You have the slightly newer style of crocodile that they introduced for the LEGO City Police Swamp sets, I believe the year prior to this, and you just have a bit of an opposition as well with a stud shooter cannon. I don't know how I feel about that. That feels a little out of place, but you do have some sort of a defense of the Imperials fighting back against the pirates. I also like how you have this little pirate here who's kind of just in a barrel, Johnny Depp style, so you've got him floating along like so. 
And overall, it's a pretty standard, basic set. Again, I'm gonna keep saying that, but this is just a regular Pirate Skull Cave. It's like you took the older Pirate Skull Cave from the 90s and just made it with standard basic building pieces in 2015. There's nothing super special going on with it. There isn't really a unique twist to it that makes it more creative than what's come before. It basically is just a revamp of the older Pirate Skull Island, which we got all the way back in the 90s. Now, there is a little nice hiding spot right here where you can slide the map into, so I guess that's a nice touch, but again, this set does feel just very generic to me. There isn't really anything special about it that sets it apart. I do like it because it definitely is like you just took LEGO Pirates and brought it into the semi-modern era, but LEGO really does need to be doing more than this to make pirates stand out in today's day and age. One thing I do like is the pirate minifigure here. This is a really nice hairpiece that is dual colored. This was not dual molded, it's actually painted on the top, but it's a really nice hairpiece and I like the design of this pirate in general. It just feels very unique and one of the most unique designs that came out of the relatively generic minifigures that came from the pirates lineup. I think that looks a little bit more complete. It definitely is a little bit more interesting visually by having the two sets combined. And again, easily my favorite part of the Pirates 2015 wave is that you can actually combine the sets themselves. And speaking of that, let's take a look at the next $20 set. This is the Imperial Outpost. It kind of is meant to represent a small section of the Imperial Fort wall. So you've got a bit of a wall there and a nice unique pirate raft. One thing I do like about this that does set it apart is that they use the cape from LEGO Legends of Chima as the sail there for the raft, which I think is a really nice touch. It's a pretty basic pirate raft in general, but I do like how they actually have some unique features to it, like that sail, and it does feel like its own separate standalone build. Also good to get the octopus piece. We don't get the octopus a lot, and it was nice that they included it again in these sets after we saw it in Pirates 2009 in Dark Red for the Kraken Attackin' set, which definitely had a lot more sauce than this one, but still, still very cool to get the Black Octopus and I actually do quite like the look and feel of the Imperial buildings here. It feels like a more modernized version of what we got for the Imperials back in the early days of Pirates, with the red brick walls and dark red being interspersed with the white walls. Definitely feels very authentic to the LEGO Pirates aesthetic, and yeah, much like every other set in the wave, this is just a basic Pirates outpost. It is pretty much the standard set that you would imagine getting, but it is nice. I like that you do have some differentiation with the Imperial characters, like this one has gold epaulets, so maybe he's like an admiral or commander or something like that, and then you have a more generic soldier up the top with the cannon. It's all right. This one is pretty okay for $20. It feels like okay value. And again, very cool thing about the larger sets is that they are actually meant to combine. So you can take this, combine it, and then you have a full on sort of an Imperial base. It's kind of on the small side. It's a little shrimpy, but it is pretty nice how you can actually combine them. And that's what you get with this set right here. For $30, you have the Imperial Outpost base here and it's just kind of more of the same. It feels pretty basic compared to what we've gotten, but you have a pirate's rowboat. And my favorite thing about this are easily the minifigures. The Admiral actually looks really good. I love the dark blue color scheme and the dark blue printing on the hat looks absolutely phenomenal. The gold there just looks really good. I like this minifigure a lot. And the Admiral's daughter also has a very unique print with leg printing, which is not something a lot of these other minifigures have. So that's also a really nice touch that we did manage to get something like this that feels just a a little bit more unique for Pirates 2015. Otherwise, this has pretty much just what you would expect for a Pirates Imperial base. You have a jail. The jail wall can be blown out, so if you have a cannon, you can maybe like cause this wall to explode and break out the pirate prisoners from the Imperial jail. You've got a bit of a crane up here which can be angled up and down and you can raise and lower the winch, just pretty much what you would expect from a base set like this. And then there's a cannon also mounted there. Again, nothing really new here. This just feels like a smaller, more simplified version of what came before. One thing I like about Pirates 2009 is that the base for the Imperials actually felt pretty unique. You had a whole Technic structure where you could move it around, and you had all sorts of different planks that you could pose minifigures on, and this just feels like more of the same in not so much of a good way. This just feels like a very basic, simplified, dumbed-down version of what came before. Again, if you ask somebody to just come up with an Imperial base type of build, this is probably what they'd come up with. It's just a really simple, 
build that doesn't try anything new. I know I'm repeating myself, but that's really all I have to say here. The one thing I do like is how good that these two bases look combined. Like, this looks like some good play can happen between the Imperials base and the Pirates base. And again, I do like how you can combine the different sets to have a much larger world, but since the sets are so small to begin with, two $20 sets and one $30 set, it's almost like LEGO didn't believe that this was gonna succeed, and therefore they didn't really give it anything big or allocate that much unique budget over to it. The minifigures feel generic, they just feel like retreads of better stuff that has come before, and it feels that LEGO was unwilling to take any risks with this. These sets are the definition of playing it safe. And that is definitely the case with the largest set, the Brick Bounty. I mean, you can hear it in the name. The name is the definition of playing it safe, but we do have one more set to cover before we get to that. Now, before we wrap up here, I want to take note of a pretty interesting phenomenon, and that's that the prices of these sets have drastically increased since their discontinuation in 2015. Much like Bionicle Generation 2, nobody wanted these when they were on shelves, but the moment they were discontinued and performed poorly, people started to realize that this might be the last time that we ever get original LEGO Pirate as a theme because it did so badly, and because of that, everybody now wants these sets. I do not want to say how much I paid for all these sets sealed. I will, but it hurts. I paid close to $80 for each of the $20 sets, $180 for this set right here, which originally retailed for $30. This, thankfully, I bought used, so I only paid like $200, but still, that's double of what it came out with. The chess set was like $150, and even the smallest set, Shipwreck Defense, the tiny $12 set, cost me $70 US dollars sealed. So why have these sets skyrocketed in value? Well, again, it's kind of as I said, people do miss classic LEGO pirates and people miss having pirates as a theme. While I definitely feel like this theme could have taken and should have taken more risks and carved out its own niche, people realize that because these did not do well, we're probably never gonna see these again, or at least a theme quite like this. And that's why they're so valuable nowadays. Nobody bought them, they had shorter production runs, and now everybody wants to get their hands on them to complete their Pirates collection, myself included. And even though the sets are basic and simple and feel like they are just a hollow shell trying to mimic what came before, there is a certain nostalgia to them. I definitely don't want to completely discredit these sets. I do like a lot of what they did with it to try to just bring back the classics, bring back what felt good about the original LEGO Pirates line, and people have definitely realized that. Bricklink is a crazy place, and the prices of these have skyrocketed for a number of reasons, but I think the biggest one is that because these sets sold poorly, and everybody knows these sets did not do well, there were so few of them made, and now everybody wants to get them before they disappear completely. So good luck to all those trying to complete their Pirates 2015 collection, it was very painful completing mine. But that really is why, and unless LEGO were to bring back Pirates as a full-on theme and hopefully bring it back with more unique elements and give the theme an identity of its own, rather than just being a shallow, greatest hitch, simplified version of what came before, these sets will probably remain very high in value because pretty much all of the LEGO themes, especially the ones around this era, Bionicle G2, Elves, all followed this phenomenon. So this is an interesting one. This is the second largest side of the wave, and it's a Pirate's Chess set. And it's always really interesting and fascinating to me when LEGO does chess sets because they always are very unique. No chess set is similar to another, and some of them do a lot better than others. Obviously, nowadays, chess sets are some of the rarest LEGO sets that you can find. The LEGO Fantasy Era Castle chess sets are selling for like $1,000 sealed. It's absolutely crazy how nuts people go for chess sets, and it definitely makes sense that LEGO would do something like this. To me, this is one of my favorite sets because, at the very least, this tries something different. We didn't get a Pirate's Chess set before this other than Pirate's 2009, and that was a completely different style, with pretty much just minifigures and the board being just one single large piece that you put together. This actually has you build up the chess board, and it even is fully modular so you can actually stack the boards and transport it for easy travel. That's something I really do appreciate about a set like this, where you actually build every single bit of it, and because of that, it's priced quite well for being a really good parts pack and minifigure pack to boot. The one thing I love about this set is that out of all of the sets that we got for LEGO Pirates, this one actually has some character to it. This doesn't just feel like a generic retread of what we've gotten. As you can see, for all the pawns, they've put in one goofy soldier. 
for all of the pawns. You know, I'm not asking for much. I'm asking for a little bit of character in my LEGO theme. And I just love how just one of the pawns is a randomly just a goofy guy. Like, this guy's got a banana instead of a sword. The other one's gotten a baguette instead of a rifle. Would it have made more sense if those were switched because that's a gun and that's a sword? I don't know. But it's still really funny. Like, this is a really nice touch. And I like how they definitely did that. They did that just to add a little bit of funny character to the chess set builds and to the minifigures. And at the end of the day, it's a really small thing. But it's something I really do appreciate, that they really tried to differentiate what was going on with these. The King and the Queen minifigures, however, are pretty boring and basic. They didn't even reuse the actual cool designs for the Admiral that we got for the pirate ship or for the pirate kind of governing base. They really just tried to use these generic looking pirate designs, most of which actually reuse the torsos from Pirates 2009. Like, they didn't even use the torsos from this theme. They decided to reuse the torsos that we got back in 09. So that's a little bit disappointing, but overall, it's a really interesting concept for a set, and I like that we got it. It's pretty cool that we got a Pirate's Chess set with so many minifigures, and at the very least, if you don't care about chess, it's a good minifigure pack. Like, this will give you a lot of soldiers to use for your army. If anybody actually cared about army building the Imperials from this section of LEGO Pirates, or the Pirates from this faction of LEGO Pirates. There's not much else I even have to say about this, like you've got land on one side and a bit of an imperial base which I think is nice, and you've got the pirate island on the other side with a bottle floating out to sea. But it's cool, it's neat that we got something like this, but it definitely doesn't even feel like it's part of the main lineup. Like this kind of feels like more of an extended line set, especially because the minifigures are not even matching the characters in the sets, like the minifigures here are just generic pirate minifigures for the king and queen and save for the imperials and it almost feels like lego just wanted to do a pirate's chess set unrelated to pirates 2015 and literally just use the parts they had on hand so it's hard to even call this a part of the theme full on it's only considered to be part of the theme because they were using some of the same torsos but it's cool I like it. It's something unique, it's something interesting, and I wish LEGO did more stuff like this. Imagine a Ninjago chess set. That would go so hard. But now I think we can move on to the largest set of the wave, the Brick Bounty. So here we have it. This is the largest and final set of the wave, the Brick Bounty, for 100 US dollars. And this to me is kind of the epitome of why I feel that this LEGO Pirates theme just ultimately did not do that well. On the surface, you might be wondering, well, what makes this so much worse than any of the other LEGO pirate ships out there? And the answer is, this isn't necessarily that much worse than all of them, but it doesn't even set itself apart from any of them. You could take a look at this and say, oh, this looks kind of like a rendition of the original LEGO pirate ship, the Black Seas Barracuda. Or you could take a look at it and say that, oh yeah, this kind of looks like the 2009 pirate ship. But the fact of the matter is, this is kind of just an amalgamation of all of the LEGO pirate ships that have come before without trying anything new. It really just plays it very, very safe. From the color scheme, to the parts usage, to pretty much all the details of the model, this kind of feels like a more juniorized or dumbed down version of what we got in the past without actually having an identity of its own. One of the coolest things about the older LEGO pirate ships is that almost every single one had something pretty unique to the way that they actually presented themselves as playable LEGO sets. One of the pirate ships back in the 90s had a full-on exploding feature where the entire back deck would buckle backwards. Another pirate ship had a fun feature where you turning the steering wheel would actually turn an anchor and rudder at the back. There were all sorts of fun features that set every single one of the pirate ships apart. Even the one in 2009 that looked a lot like this had the man-eating shark which they introduced for the set and that also had a lot more detail on the exterior and interior. This to me feels like, again, you just told somebody to make a pirate ship LEGO set and it assembled a greatest hits version of the LEGO pirate ships without really understanding why they were so popular to begin with. The Black Seas Barracuda was so good because it was the first time we got anything like it from LEGO. Even in 2009 that introduced novelties like the big shark and you had a much more detailed interior and actual characters that set that ship apart. This just feels like a very generic pirate ship without any sauce, it just doesn't have anything interesting to it. 
That being said, it's not a bad build. It is pretty basic, but it is what you would expect out of a pirate ship from LEGO. You have a nice interior. You can actually remove the platform here and take a look at inside the pirate ship itself. You've got some amount of detail in there. There's a desk, there's a pirate map, there's a sextant as well as a little table for a bottle of alcohol or whatever, I guess, juice that the pirates are drinking. But even if you look at the interior, it's really plain. There's just nothing really that interesting to it. Yeah, you have lights, you have a desk, but it's again the most basic interior you could potentially have for a pirate ship. The same for the top level. You have a cannon, you have a steering wheel, and that's about it. There's nothing really else to it. And this is just almost way too simple for what I would expect from a LEGO pirate ship. Typically, I'd want to see them do something more unique, something special, something vibrant, but this just feels like the most bare bones pirate ship you can imagine. And I feel like that sentiment kind of applies to the entire wave, where LEGO, in their effort to make this appeal to everyone, ultimately appealed to nobody. And I feel like this is a really good learning point from LEGO to just take a look at how they adapt their classic themes into the modern age, where they really have to make them feel special, do what they were doing back in the 90s, and try to give us more unique things rather than just making a worse version of what's come before. I don't really feel this strongly about any other theme aside from Pirates 2015, which for whatever reason, this is the theme that really gets me as, man, if this theme wasn't the way it was, we could be having Pirates as a full-on evergreen LEGO theme with releases every year, if not for the way that they actually just mismanaged this theme. That being said, the minifigures are alright. I actually really like the usage of the Admiral hairpiece for the leader of the Imperials. That's a really nice touch to add for the governor there. I think that's a really cool looking minifigure. The pirates are okay. You have the main pirate himself, which again is kind of just an amalgamation of the classic red beard that we got in the past. We also have a pirate cook. That's kind of nice. That's actually a very unique thing about this line, and probably my favorite thing about the lineup of pirates is that this is legitimately a unique character. But everything else is just very generic, very basic, and just doesn't have any sort of flavor to it that would make this stand out, especially in a lineup of themes like Ninjago that was doing some crazy things in 2015, Tournament of Elements and Possession. Star Wars The Force Awakens was going so hard and we were getting Bionicle back. That was just a very crowded year for LEGO themes in general, and having something this basic and this uninteresting just meant that pirates didn't stand a chance. It wasn't because of Pirates, it was because of Pirates 2015. This has been our look at LEGO Pirates 2015, something that could definitely serve as a cautionary tale to LEGO about how to adapt their classic themes going forwards into the future. Now, LEGO does seem to have a pretty good handle on how to bring older themes like Pirates, Castle, or even Space into the modern era, and the answer to that is by simply adapting old classics into 18 plus icon sets, making them more adult focused with advanced building techniques, highly detailed minifigures, and really just trying to make them larger and larger sets. But I do genuinely feel like there is a space for LEGO Pirates as a regular theme aimed for kids to exist. This just wasn't it. And of course, the timing of the launch definitely leaves a lot to be desired as well. This came out in 2015 and had steep competition. Star Wars was back on the big screen, and much like how Bionicle Generation 2 was impacted by the launch of action figure based Star Wars sets, this was also impacted by a heavy focus being put on licensed themes for the year of 2015. Coming off of the LEGO movie when LEGO was at an all-time high and felt like they could do anything, this just felt like they were taking what came before and haphazardly putting it together into a classic theme without really doing the research needed to make this a hit with kids. And with Nexo Knights coming out the next year that really did reinvent Castle, for better or for worse, I think that reinvented it a little bit too much, this theme definitely feels like it could have used some of that juice, some of that energy. Imagine if LEGO made a story-based pirate theme in 2015 that focused, much like Fantasy Era, on more fantastical elements of the pirate story. Sure, you could have Imperials in there, but throw in some sea monsters, throw in some LEGO Atlantis type creatures, and really try to make it a more fantastical world. It doesn't need a TV show, but you could tell the story through comics and make the characters feel like people you want to root for, rather than just generic pirates. 
Back in the day, LEGO could have gotten by by making just generic soldiers and generic pirates, not really giving them any personalities or quirks or making you root for the characters, but that age has long passed. LEGO should see themselves as a storytelling company first and a toy company second. And maybe that's a controversial opinion, but I do definitely feel that the themes that do the best are the ones that do have a very strong narrative-driven play behind them. It's not that Pirates isn't popular, in fact, just look at all of the different Pirates media out today, from Pirates of the Caribbean to One Piece, Pirates is stronger than ever. So why did this fail? Well, it's because people love Pirates because they love the characters that they can connect with them. Everybody loves Jack Sparrow or Luffy, but nobody knows who that guy is, or who this guy is. If you don't know who the characters are, it's hard to find somebody to root for in play. And it's even harder when you don't even know who are the good guys and bad guys. In theory, the Imperials are supposed to be keeping the peace. So maybe the Pirates are the bad guys? I mean, maybe that guy looks kind of like a villain right there. But the pirates are the fun part. Everyone wants to play as the pirates. Every kid wants to be the pirates. So then, do you root against the Imperials? What do you have the pirates doing? What do you have them robbing? It's definitely just a hard subject to cover if you don't have narrative focus play behind it. And that's why I truly feel that the best way to reinvent pirates going into the future is to make it its own story-based theme. Again, imagine a fantasy era style theme that focuses on the more fantastical elements of pirates. Have them fighting fish people, have them be fighting the Krakens or Cthulhu or something like that. Just make it a little bit more interesting than the tried and true pirates versus Imperials because we've seen that, we've done that. This is Lego Pirates in its most pure form. You have all of the quintessential elements of Lego Pirates but I have to say, this theme does not have the sauce. Yes, you have a small little shipwreck playset, you have a pirate skull island, you have two different styles of imperial bases, and you have a big pirate ship. But what you don't have... But what you don't have is the sauce because this theme does not have anything interesting behind it. The builds are basic, the characters are not super interestingly designed, they feel more like generic counterparts of other pirate stuff that has come before, and the builds themselves feel like LEGO just did a survey or took a look at the most popular pirate space sets, not even the most popular, the most quintessential ones, and slapped them together in a wave. Even the pirate ship feels a little lackluster compared to what came before in 2009, and especially compared to what we were getting around that time with Pirates of the Caribbean, giving us more and more fantastical and larger designs. Overall, this wave definitely feels like the result of LEGO Corporate coming together and wanting to simply bring back pirates. And this to me is not really the way to do it, because this theme could have been so much more if they just put a little bit more effort into making it unique, but instead they played it safe, and playing it safe is not good enough these days. That's all for my look at LEGO Pirates 2015. I definitely don't dislike the sets. In fact, I do like a lot of what they were doing with some of these sets, and it does feel like a modern reinterpretation of LEGO Pirates. But as we all know, the audience did not like it that much. These sets did not do so well. And unfortunately, I just hope that LEGO did not take away the wrong lesson from this, that people don't want pirates. People want pirates. People just don't want Pirates 2015. That's all for now, and I hope you enjoyed this special look. All right, and with that, we have summed up our look at LEGO Pirates 2015, the ill-fated theme that seemed to have almost everything stacked against it. I hope you enjoyed this analysis of why LEGO themes fail, and thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye for now.